Do you know that problem too? You're measuring signals that aren't actually there. Today I want to help you drive away these spooks from your electronic maker project. Electronics is not always perfect. Especially when you process weak analog signals electronically, you can absorb a number of unwanted signals. The main sum is present almost everywhere and if we do not take measures against it, it will be superimposed on our signal. In addition, we often have interference from our own power supply. Switch mode power supplies in particular are problematic because they work with a high frequency clock that is not easy to filter out. And then there are interferences that come from digital circuits that we use in our project. Popular microprocessor boards such as Arduino, Raspberry etc. even have digital and analog circuits on the same chip. Here we have to accept that the analog signals cannot be processed really clean because the currents from the digital outputs and the processor clocks are slightly coupling to the analog inputs. As an effect of this we see spooks in our analog signals. I call these signals spooks because they come unexpectedly and fluctuate. In addition we can usually not explain what the cause is. Sometimes they are there and sometimes they are not. And they are really annoying us when we want to process relatively weak analog signals. And now we finally come to the interesting case that I want to discuss with you. I made a controller for a simple gauge with a stepper motor. By the way, all the hardware and software is completely self-designed. Also, I published the files for 3D printing. I will link you the videos on the top right. The display instrument is built with simple means and it works really well as long as you are processing digital values. However, as soon as you want to process a weak analog signal from a microphone with it, certain limits of interference immunity become apparent. The pointer movements are showing the spooks I was talking about. They hound our electronics, although there is actually no signal from outside. What can you do to drive away that spook? I need to mention that I used capacitors in the construction in order to stabilize the DC voltages. I used electrolytic capacitors to smoothen the supply voltage. And multiple ceramic capacitors block high frequency spikes on the analog inputs. There is not much more that can be done with simple hardware means. Of course you could work with high tech instead of just an Arduino board. You would use a high quality power supply, a high quality analog to digital converter and a high quality microphone with well shielded cables. Unfortunately our maker project would then cost more than 200 euros instead of 15 euros. Actually I would like to stick with the simple solution. It is basically made from a cheap microphone module and the analog to digital converter which is built into the Arduino Nano. And the power supply can be any USB charger or a PC. So I tried to achieve improvements by optimizing the code and the result is not bad at all as we will see in a few minutes. By the way, as usual with software, I discovered bugs which I fixed on this occasion. It's a bit of a challenge to achieve improvements to this relatively simple piece of hardware just by measures in the code. But I tried it anyway. We start with the settings. Here I have to briefly explain something that I haven't explained in detail in the previous videos. With this parameter we set the speed of the stepper motor. There are certain limits which depend on the type of stepper motor and the mass moment of inertia of the pointer. 
I already explained that in a previous video about the speed limits of a stepper motor. However, this parameter can still be slightly changed, for example to avoid resonant vibrations of the pointer. The delay defines the repetition rate of our main loop and thus the sampling interval of our analog signal. If we want the stepper motor to be able to follow the signal, then we need to consider the following. We set a stepper speed of 22 rpm. One revolution is 720 steps. So 22 times 720 divided by 60 results in 264 steps per second. This corresponds to about 3.8 milliseconds per step. That means the stepper could do 1.3 steps maximum within 5 milliseconds. Now of course an analog system could contain a slope faster than 1.3 steps per 5 milliseconds. And it could also fall back to zero before our pointer even reaches the peak value. In this case the pointer would make odd stuttering movements which are looking kind of unnatural. And this is where our filter function comes into play. We need to adjust the resonant frequency and damping so that the pointer can always follow. As a result the pointer performs harmonious movements. So now we finally come to the spooks. We have irregular but relatively low frequency disturbances. We will see later that we derive our audio value by taking the difference from a reference value. The reference value is the floating average of the input signal. If you want to have a stable average value, then you take a large value here, causing the average algorithm to compute the average over a long time period. We change the value and make it relatively small. This causes the reference value to now fluctuate with the slow changes in the signal. We will see later that this allows us to get rid of slow signal interference. The brightness for the lighting seemed a little too low, so I increased it to 155. When clipping the brightness increases to 255. You can of course set these parameters according to your own needs. We move on to the void setup. Here I only make a minor change. Since I'm only using about 220 degrees of the stepper motor, I can reduce the number of steps that bring the pointer to the left stop at the start. Now we come to the void that drives the stepper motor. And here I really have to blame myself because there were two mistakes in the code. In the second if query I put a zero instead of the variable diff. Even when this error had no effect on the function I corrected it because I don't want to confuse my followers here. The second bug was that the delay command was on the wrong line. And uh, that had a clear effect on the timing, which sometimes led to stuttering pointer movements. Okay, we learn from this. It really pays off if you do a lot of testing and optimizing your code. It's always good to plan more time for this than for writing the code. Incidentally, and this is also the case with professional projects. Now we are coming to the aforementioned averaging. Recall that I reduced the variable NO average to 1.45 which has reduced the time frame for the averaging. As a result the reference value follows slow disturbing signals. And here comes the trick. We compute the difference between the reference signal and the audio signal. Since the reference value follows the slow disturbances on the signal, the low frequency disturbances are subtracted from the signal. 
And then we compute the absolute value from this, since we only want to display the intensity and not the rapid fluctuations of the audio signals. And then there is another filter function that avoids interference. With this averaging we dampen high frequency peaks that could also cause spooky signals. In the meantime I've become a bit neurotic and I would like to smooth out everything that somehow affects the signal path. That's why I increase the smoothing for the gain setting by a factor of 10. I don't know if there is any additional benefit, but in any case it doesn't do any harm. By correcting the stepper driver bug, the loop times have become longer. And therefore I had to make the counters for the startup process smaller. The success of my code optimization is quite remarkable. The spook is gone. At least the interfering signals are now suppressed to such an extent that they no longer interfere with the audio volume measurement using the microphone module. That's nice. And I have to say that without the code improvements it would not be possible to measure low volume with this arrangement. You would only see the glitches on the gauge caused by the fluctuating power supply, mains hum and transients from digital signals. I think we had some interesting learnings. First we can now imagine reasons why good measuring devices tend to be expensive. Second you got an idea how you can actually compensate for some hardware limitations with a few tricks in the code. Third, once you have built an electronics project it's always worth testing and tweaking. With a little know-how something can definitely be improved. It's always a lot of fun and sometimes it takes exactly these tricks to get the project up and running. Actually, I didn't mention the interference of strong radio signals yet. We will talk about that later in a separate video. Now stay tuned and don't forget to support the channel. See you soon in the coming episodes.